Hi out there, this is Nicole of Nicole York Photography, and I'm here for a Click Shutter amazing tutorial on layer masks. Layer masks are one of the most powerful tools at your disposal when working in Photoshop because they allow you to make non-destructive edits to your photograph and apply them specifically to the areas that you want and nowhere else, which is really cool and super handy for making adjustments. And I'm going to show you not only what a layer mask is, but how to use it and how you can manipulate it so that you can selectively apply your adjustments to the areas of your photograph that you want. And I'm going to start with this photo that I took up on Mount Hood, or Mount Rainier, excuse me, this year with my family. And I took two different exposures because we were losing light and I wanted to keep some of the information in the sky since it was clear and there were no clouds to make it cool, unfortunately. Um, so I took one exposure a little bit dark to keep some information in the sky and one a little bit light so that I could keep this kind of beautiful soft light that was in the foreground. But I want this sky and this foreground. How am I going to do that? So one of the things that I can do is I can use a layer mask in order to reveal this blue sky and nothing else. And the way that I can do that is by going down here to this apply layer mask button and it's going to give me a little white layer mask that is chained to this layer. And what the important thing to know about layer masks is right off the bat is white reveals, black conceals. So the white layer mask will allow me to see any adjustments that I make to this layer. So if I were to take my brush and I were to come onto this layer and just make a mess of it, the white layer mask is basically see-through. It's allowing me to see that. But if I invert this layer mask by pressing Command or Control I, it's going to paint the layer mask black. White reveals black conceals. So the black layer mask is now going to hide anything that I do to this layer. If I go to paint on the layer mask, you'll see that what I've done now shows through. I can hide that by painting it black again. So even if I go over to the mask and I or to the layer and I try to do something, the layer mask is hiding it. You can see that it shows up here, but the layer mask is stopping me from seeing it. So I'm going to get rid of all of those little messy messes right there. What I want to be able to do is selectively apply this layer mask to the areas of the image that I want to show through. So instead of applying it right now to the entire image, what is, which is what this layer mask is doing, I'm going to hit Command or Control on a PC, I, and I'm going to hide the layer mask. And I now only want to come in and paint on the layer mask where I want to apply that adjustment. And in this case, it would be the sky. So your first option is to use a brush. The brush is the quickest and the most accurate way to make sure that adjustments go exactly where you want them to. The problem is, if you're working in areas like this, where you've got these trees with all of these tiny little branches and tiny little limbs, you're going to start seeing a problem because the adjustment is covering up areas that I don't want to show, but if I'm using the brush and I'd have to come in and I have to work really super tiny because look at all of this little detail. If I don't want to cover that up, then I have to come in really, really small and try to paint that all in. And that's going to be really long, painstaking work. So, whoops. So, hit a crazy button. Didn't want to do that. So, rather than doing that, I'm going to use another trick with my layer mask. So right now, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this layer mask, and then I'm going to create another one. And I'm going to go up here to Image, Apply Image, and it is applying this effect using my bottom layer. I'm going to press OK. 
And now you can see over here that's what it's done to the layer mask is it's actually made a grayscale representation of the layer. And the way that I can see this is by pressing the option button and then clicking on the layer mask. That's let, that, that lets me see the layer mask in exactly as it is uh, in full screen. So if you look at this grayscale, grayscale representation, the cool thing, if you remember, is that the white reveals and the black conceals. So on my layer mask now, if I show you what it looks like, I've got that blue that I wanted in the sky, but since the white reveals in my layer mask, I'm also getting it applied down here to parts of the image that I don't want it applied to. It's taking care, whoops, it's taking care of my hard work for me by applying the adjustment up here in the trees where I was really gonna struggle having to um, paint all of that in, but it's also giving it to me down here on the rocks where I don't want it. So one of the cool tricks that you can do is actually apply a curves adjustment directly to your layer mask, or you can come in and paint that in with a brush. So my first option, if I wanted to use my brush, I can hit the option and then click this. I can come in with a brush and a black brush is gonna cover up all of this stuff and I can paint that in and that will effectively get rid of that area and you can see that's the area that doesn't change is that area that I painted. But I may end up getting into fishy territory again if I start trying to paint up here in these small detail areas. So what I can do is actually apply a curves adjustment directly to this layer mask by making sure that it's selected and then pressing Command or Control M. That brings up a little dialog box for me that is only gonna apply directly to this layer mask. On a curves adjustment, on the right hand side are your highlights and the left hand side are your shadows. And I know that I want to increase the shadows because I want to block out having any of that effect applied to my image down here in the darker part of my image. So I'm gonna grab this curves adjustment and I'm gonna pull it this way. And immediately you can see that in the layer mask, it's darkened up all of this area down here, but it hasn't touched the bright areas because I have not adjusted those. So I can just adjust this until I get it where I want it. I wanna be a little bit careful because I don't want to uh, block out too much in my sky. And you can see if I make adjustments, what happens. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let you see what that looks like. And then I'm gonna leave it right there. And if I option click on this layer mask, you can see where the effect was applied. Now, I only have to come in with my brush and just take care of a little bit since it finessed that layer mask for me all by itself. Now I have this really cool adjustment where I've got my detail back in my sky and I have the original exposure down here. So I've got a really nice range of light here. But I'm not quite happy with this image. There's a few more things that I wanna do. So let's say that I want to be able to give myself a little bit more contrast down here. I'm gonna do that with a curves adjustment and you can see that anytime you click on any adjustment layer, it comes up with its own layer mask. I want to pull this up a little bit because I want those nice bright highlights in my grass and in my rocks and then I'm gonna pull down just a little bit I wanna give myself a little bit of contrast you can finesse these adjustments to wherever uh, whatever's gonna work for your image and maybe this makes me really happy let's just say that this is pretty good for me the problem is since the adjustment is applied globally to the entire image it's also applying it up here to the sky where I don't want it so I have the same options in this situation as I had when I first started editing. I can either come in with a black brush and paint on this adjustment layer to try to get rid of that, which is of course then gonna start affecting the trees. Um, if I use a big brush and then I'll have to do painstaking detail work if I use a tiny brush. Or 
I can actually take this layer mask, since it's already applied to the areas that I want it, and I can drag it up and copy it onto this layer mask using Option, and then I'm just going to click on it and pull it. It'll ask me if I want to replace the layer mask. I do. And since white reveals and black conceals, I want this mask the opposite of what it is now. So I'm going to select it, and I'm going to hit Command-I and invert it. And there we have that adjustment that I wanted to make to my foreground and my sky is still safe. So if I make a group out of these two layers, I can let you see this is what we've done so far. And it took a while since I was explaining it all, but you can do this yourself in probably under a minute if you don't take too long finessing your image. And then if there's any additional adjustments I need to make, like maybe I want to keep a little bit more of that detail in my mountain, I can come in with a brush and I can make little adjustments there in order to just really fine tune the image. So let's say that I want to add a little bit of, wrong button, a little bit of a hue and saturation adjustment and get a little bit more saturation into my image. I can pull that up. I start getting what I want, and I still have a layer mask here that I can use if I decide that I don't really want quite so much red in my rocks over here. I can come in and I can paint that right out with my brush, and I can show you exactly where that's been done. You can see it so that if you need to, you can come in and, and clean up the lines if you want. Or maybe I would like to add a little bit more blue to my blue flowers here. I'm going to remove a little bit of the green and bring up a little bit more of the blue. And then since I don't want to apply that to the entire image, I'm going to hit Command I. And then I'm going to use a white brush. And I'm going to be a little bit sloppy uh, because I don't want to take up a million hours with this tutorial, but it'll give you the idea. So I'll come in and then I can paint right onto my flowers exactly where I want these adjustments to be and they'll go there selectively instead of applying them to the entire image. That way I can really highlight in the image what I want to be seen. Which makes it really handy for being able to just get exactly what you want from an image. Maybe I want to highlight a little bit the uh, brightness of the tops of the grass to really kind of add some depth. I can pull up my midtones just a tiny little bit. I can again uh, invert the mask on that and then maybe I'll go down to 30% opacity with my brush and just paint on this adjustment just a little bit into the highlights of my grass so that you really get a sense of depth out of the way the light is striking the tops of my flower, of uh, the flowers and the grass and all of that kind of stuff. And you can paint that on pretty simply, maybe a little bit more down here to show really what the light is doing. And then you can see exactly where those were applied. And then you can hit option and click on it and it will show you exactly where those adjustments were applied. So that is a quick rundown of layer masks that how to use them. All you need to do to add a layer mask is hit the layer mask button. You can even put a layer mask on your layer mask. So this is how you get them on there. They always start white. Any adjustment layer is automatically going to have its own layer mask, which is super handy. Global adjustment there. Then I can always change the opacity if I want to and come on and paint on here to take it out of the areas that I don't want it. So huge amount that you can do with these layer masks and just to show just to show the before and after so you can see it 
that's just a quick, dirty rundown of some simple, whoops, of some simple things that you can do with layer masks and some ways that you can manipulate them. Never forget that white reveals and black conceals and that you can make adjustments to your layer mask itself with a curves adjustment by hitting Command M and pulling these around. You can also use apply image in order to get yourself a mask that is a grayscale representation. That way you can even come in and fine tune more. Um, in fact, you can fine tune to the point where you can go in and paint right on your grayscale image to give yourself a whole lot of control. Whoops. Um, you can go in there and might even just continue to do that with this gradient. image watch me just make a goober of everything what a pain Anyway, same thing we did before, apply image, it'll bring up that grayscale for you. Then you can come in and really get exact and paint right along your edges so that you're not missing any details that you want to deal with. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, make sure that you come into the uh, Click Shutter Amazing group and let us know what you think, if this helped you, if there's anything you think we missed or that you'd like to see or hear about uh, in regards to layer masks. And this is again, Nicole York of Nicole York Photography, signing out, good luck.